Now that we've seen how sequential logic is implemented in FPGAs, it's time to start creating some sequential designs. Up until now, we've primarily used Verilog to build combinational logic designs, and the syntax we've learned has been focused around that. We'll need to learn a few new bits of syntax to implement sequential logic, as well as new constructs to deal with things like timing and conditional statements. We've touched on a couple of these areas in test bench design, but there's still a lot to learn. One of the first things we need to tackle when dealing with sequential logic is procedural assignment. Procedural assignment is the backbone of sequential logic in Verilog. It allows us to assign values to registers or variables under specific conditions. The right-hand side of the assignment can change multiple times, but the left-hand side will only update when these conditions are met. The register or variable will then hold its value until the conditions are met again. In synchronous sequential circuits, the condition will most likely be the changing edge of a clock, but it doesn't always have to be. In Verilog, procedural assignments are encapsulated in special blocks of code called procedural blocks. There are two t there are two key types of procedural block that we're going to look at today, the always block and the initial block. The always block is the most common procedural block. It's the main way of describing what events should occur under certain conditions. The structure of an always block is relatively simple, as you can see here. We use the always keyword, followed by an at symbol, then specify the block's sensitivity list in parentheses. The sensitivity list outlines the conditions which will cause the code in the block to execute. A single module can contain many different always blocks, each with different conditions in their sensitivity lists. We can trigger code on the positive edge of a signal, the negative edge, or both edges, provided that the signal is asynchronous, or in other words, not a clock. We can also use multiple signals in the sensitivity list, building up a complex set of conditions required to trigger the block. If we wanted to, we could even use always blocks to build combinational circuits, so we'd put a star in the sensitivity list to indicate that the block should run on the changing state of any signal in it. As procedural blocks are complex constructs, there are some specific syntax and language rules that we need to follow. If any of these rules are broken, your code will not compile. Firstly, the left-hand side of any assignment in a procedural block must be of a procedural type, or in other words, a register or a variable. You cannot procedurally assign wires. The elements on the right-hand side of the assignment, however, can be of any type. Secondly, a single register cannot be driven by multiple always blocks. This is to do with how these designs are implemented on the device. The sensitivity list for an always block determines the clock signal for the flip-flop representing that register element. A flip-flop can only have one clock source, therefore a register can only be included in a single always block. Along similar lines, you cannot mix double and single signal edges in the sensitivity list. The device architecture simply can't handle it. Finally, for combinational logic, you must include all signals in the sensitivity list, if using the star notation is impractical. This is to avoid having elements not trigger an update in the combinational circuit. You may have noticed that I'm sometimes using slightly different syntax when doing procedural assignments. In continuous assignment, we always use the standard equal sign within our statements to set the left-hand side of the assignment to be the result of the right-hand side expression. In procedural assignment, this isn't always the case. We can use different signs to mean different things, and the one we use is dependent on whether the assignment is blocking or non-blocking. Non-blocking assignments happen in parallel, and we define them with a greater than or equals to sign. If multiple non-blocking assignments take place in one always block, they are all set at exactly the same time. If the right-hand side of a non-blocking assignment contains the result of another non-blocking assignment in the same always block, it will use the old value of that assignment, so you can think of it as chaining together registers within a single always block. On the other hand, blocking assignments happen sequentially. If multiple blocking assignments take place in one always box, they are set one after the other. So if the right-hand side of a blocking assignment contains the result of another blocking assignment, the result of the expression will be determined by whichever is defined first in the block. To define a blocking assignment, we use an equal sign. You'll need to think carefully about which type of assignment you should be using. In sequential circuits, non-blocking assignments are usually more appropriate, but in combinational circuits, blocking assignments are usually more appropriate.
Pay close attention and take care with your syntax when you're writing modules. A single omitted greater than sign can completely change the function of your circuit. You should be compiling, simulating and evaluating your modules as you build them. Let's take a look at an example sequential logic module. The code here implements a D-type flip-flop using procedural assignment. It's very simple. There's a single always block which is triggered by the positive edge of a clock input. On each clock tick, the output register Q is set to whatever state the input D is currently at. Even though we only have one statement, we should still use a non-blocking assignment here, as it's good practice for sequential logic. Note that as the output is on the left-hand side of the assignment, it must be a variable data type, in this case a register. In Verilog, Outputs are defined as wires by default, but we can redeclare them as registers in the port list. If you do not do this, your module will not compile and Quartus will give you an error. We're now going to take a look at another type of procedural block, one that you should recognize from test bench design, the initial block. When we simulate some of our designs, we'll want to set the value of registers in our system's very first state. This will become particularly important when using closed loops. We can do this using an initial block. Initial blocks allow us to set the state of registers at time zero of the circuit. This gives them a value for the initial state and eradicates any uncertainty. Unlike always blocks, initial blocks can only ever run once and are not repeatable. Keep in mind that using initial blocks for synthesis is bad practice. Dependent on the specific device architecture, they might not even be able to exist in hardware, and we should therefore only ever use them for simulation. It's far better practice to use a reset signal to initialize registers within the first few clock cycles of the design, as we'll see in a bit. Now that we're working with procedural assignment and sequential circuits, we have the tools to implement a bit more behavioral Verilog that you'll recognize from other languages, conditional statements. We can use conditional statements within procedural blocks to further decide how a circuit should act depending on the state of a signal. The two conditional statements that are available to us are if and case. The if statement in Verilog acts exactly like it does in other programming languages. We specify some conditions and what should happen if they are evaluated as true or false. In always blocks, if statements will re-evaluate every time the block is triggered. Should we want to, we can further extend an if statement with chains of if, else if, and so on and so forth. In hardware, if statements can easily be thought of as a multiplexer which feeds into the flip-flop. The code here shows a modified version of the D-type flip-flop, which uses an if statement to implement reset and enable functions. As initial statements are treated as not synthesizable, we use reset signals to give specific registers an initial state. This means when we simulate the design, we should toggle the reset pin at the start to avoid any unknown states on the output. Case statements are similar to if statements. They act as a decision instruction which chooses an outcome for execution, depending on the state of a specific signal. The outcome chosen is the one with a value that matches that of the case statement. So case statements in Verilog are used to form the foundations of state machines, as you'll look at in a later module. The code here shows how we can use a case statement to create a JK flip-flop in Verilog. As mentioned in the previous screencast, the logic elements on the device that we're using only contain D-type flip-flops. Therefore, a JK flip-flop will be synthesized using a feedback loop from the output to the input and some combinational logic in the lookup table. Because of the feedback loop in the design, there's the likelihood of the output of the module being in an unknown state. If J and K are set to 0, 0, or 1, 1, the output of the design either keeps its previous state or toggles, respectively. However, if it's the first tick of the clock, there isn't a previous state to keep or toggle. In simulation, the design will remain in an unknown state until a fixed value is either given or set by changing the values of J and K. In hardware, there's actually no real way of telling what the initial state will be, unless you start looking in the architecture documentation and seeing how the device deals with such things. But this is why our designs need a reset. We can trigger the reset at the start of the simulation to set all of our registers into a known state. So in this video, we've covered the basics of sequential design in Verilog. These are the key things to remember. Firstly, the left-hand side of a procedural assignment must be a variable data type. In most cases for you, it will be a register. Do not try and procedurally assign wires. 
Secondly, any output driven by a procedural assignment must be of the type output reg. Thirdly, initial blocks are not always synthesizable and therefore are only to be used for simulation. They will be ignored when the design is committed to hardware. And finally, make sure you include reset signals in your designs if any feedback loops are present.